Welcome back to the Circuit Sphere. Today we are working on PowerBook G4s. So, a little backstory. A little while back, I bought a lot of MacBooks and PowerBooks that were listed as damaged, and this was included. Uh, when I got it, I opened it up, powered it on, and the bottom half of the screen doesn't work. So what I did was go on eBay, see if I could find a power book that could act as a donor. What I got was this one that was listed as not working. When I got it, it's in better condition than the one I was going to rob parts from. And so I have decided that this is the one that we are going to make working. Before we dive into the excitement, I wanted to take a moment to express my gratitude. You are the reason for my passion to continue growing the circuit sphere. The support, comments, and enthusiasm you have shown have been truly heartwarming. Here's where I need your help. If you've been enjoying the content, if you've found something helpful, entertaining, or just something that brightened your day, I want to ask you to simply hit that subscribe button. Thank you. As you can see, this has been this pretty dented, beat up versus the good one. Much less dense, a lot better condition. And the full spec, so this is a 1.5 gigahertz Power Mac G4. 15 inch has two gigabytes of RAM so it was a pretty high spec one when it came out so today we're gonna do some upgrades we're gonna clean this up we're gonna add a 128 megabyte SD card SSD is the hard drive and I managed to snag a brand new battery for this power book so we're gonna put that in all right we're gonna start by getting this MacBook taken apart I'm gonna use my iFixit toolkit which there'll be a link in the description below for I've used this kit for eight years now so to get this open we gotta start by taking all these screws off on the sides well I'm actually gonna start by taking this battery out then we'll take off the RAM cover and there's two screws inside the RAM cover take out all the screws on the side and then there's bottom screws I guess they're the top Yeah, I'm a dummy. I've been sitting here trying to figure out how to get this off. And I forgot the flipping four screws on the back. Now I'm going to do a quick vacuum of the inside. That uh, battery is looking pretty sad. Now I'm going to remove this old Toshiba 80 gigabyte IDE drive located in the center here. After cleaning out the gunk built up in the hard drive area, it's time to install the 128 gigabyte 
SD card along with the IDE adapter. Now I'll make sure to put the links for these items down below. Take a little piece of tape here, kind of hold this down. Now that all the cleaning's done, I'm going to hurry and reassemble this power book. Then we can go ahead and install Mac OS 10.5 Leopard, get into the benchmarks, and then try and run Halo. I almost forgot about installing the new battery. Now it's time for the new battery. Very fresh, very shiny. All right, I had to take it all apart again because it went power on and the CD got stuck inside. I cleaned off the CD, plugged everything back in. Now everything seems good. We'll see. And there we have it, a fresh install of macOS 10.5 Leopard. All right, I forgot to run benchmarks before I did the upgrade, so I apologize. On this one, we only get to see the follow-up benchmarks. Real quick, here's a little plug for my favorite thumb drive. This is a SanDisk thumb drive. It's 128 gigabytes. The neat thing about this is it has USB-C and USB-A. And I always have a problem because I do all this old Mac stuff, but I have a MacBook Air M2 that only has USB-C. So this makes it real easy. I can stick this into the MacBook Air, download something, switch it over, stick it in to my... Uh, the old computer that I'm working on. Anyway, I think that it is a great tool. Anyone that deals with old computers or just is constantly switching between USB-C and USB-A, this is essential and it's got amazing read-write speeds. Anyway, I'll put a link in the description below. And we're off to the races with our first benchmark, Geekbench 2.2.7. Our final Geekbench score is 394, which is not too hot out of all of the computers that I've tested. This PowerBook G4 ranks second to last out of all of the PowerPC Macintoshes that I have ran benchmarks on since I've started keeping track in this spreadsheet here, which I'll go into more detail in another episode, but basically, um, I'm going to start keeping track of all of the benchmarks I do so that I can rank them and uh, we're going to call it the sphere scale so that they'll all be ranked from highest to lowest. Next up on the list of benchmarks is Xbench. The final Xbench score on the PowerBook G4 is 44.47 which places this PowerBook fourth from the bottom. Now the SSD I installed helped boost the score up over the Power Mac G4 Quicksilver. I have no doubt the Quicksilver would have beat it had I have installed an SSD onto it. The final benchmark I'm gonna run is Cinebench 2003. Now this is where the PowerBook G4 makes up some ground. It has a really good ATI Radeon 9700 with 64 megabytes of RAM, which gives it a total Cinebench score of 1,491, and then a total overall score, which in my spreadsheet is all the benchmark scores added together of 5,172.34. Since this PowerBook has Bluetooth, I decided that I would pair my Retro Mighty Mouse 
and given that this Mac has 64 gigabyte or excuse me 64 megabyte of uh, VRAM on the graphics card I think we might be able to do some Halo on this so let's get rolling with that since we're gonna play Halo I'm gonna pair my wireless keyboard as well I gave you a double dose of the wake up step Take a quick walk around the cryo bay and join me at the optical diagnostic station when you're ready. Those Marines could use some help, Chief. Do what you do best. It has truly been a pleasure working on the PowerBook G4. Among my favorite Apple computers, this model stands out, boasting a timeless design that still exudes modernity despite its weight. The durable aluminum construction guarantees its longevity, ensuring that this laptop will remain a source of enjoyment for years to come. With its powerful GPU for its time, the PowerBook G4 delivered an exceptionally satisfying Halo experience. Thank you so much for joining me on this PowerBook adventure. Remember to enjoy your pursuits, and until next time, have fun and take time for your passions. Fly so high, I'm hypnotized.